What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another OBS tutorial for you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best recording settings if you're trying to use your new NVIDIA RTX 3000 graphics card. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. So we're in the new OBS 27, which was released just on June 1st of 2021. This new version of OBS is better in a lot of different ways than version 26, but there are plenty of videos comparing those two out already, so I won't be wasting your time with that. Today, we're gonna be talking about the best recording settings you can get using your GPU. So let's go over to settings. On the left-hand side, we see all of our standard options right here, and we're gonna choose video. The video settings are important because it all changes depending on what type of game you're playing, on what monitor you're using, on what refresh rate you have, things like that. Some people game on 2K and 4K monitors, but the golden rule I like to use when streaming or recording is use 1080p. And that means scale it down to 1080p if you're using a higher resolution. So I usually game in 2K, so for my base canvas resolution, I would change that to 2K. But when I'm recording or streaming, I want to downscale that to 1080p or 720p. Downscaling makes it easier for people viewing your stream or recording to watch it, and it also makes it easier in your computer to make that stream or recording. If you have a really good PC with a big monitor and you want people to easily watch it, make your base canvas your monitor's resolution and your output scaled 1080p, 1920 by 1080. If you have a lower end computer, you wanna probably change your base canvas to 1080p, game in 1080p, and then downscale it to 720p. That'll make it a lot easier on lower end PCs. Now, if you are downscaling, we'll see downscale filters right here, and then we have four options. The top one is bilinear, then we got area, then we got bicubic, then we got langsos. Bilinear is the fastest output. It's easier on lower end computers, but it is not super, super accurate, and it gets a little bit blurry every once in a while. That's for lower end PCs. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have langsos, which is a really good sharpened downscale and that is pretty intensive on the computer, so you have to have a good computer to choose this option, or you'll get dropped frames and things like that. So if you have a pretty average computer, you can choose area or bicubic, it doesn't really matter on that one. So I'm just gonna choose area. And then we have common FPS value. Now typically, you're playing a game in about 60 frames per second if you have a 60 hertz monitor. The end user watching your stream is never gonna see it in that high of a frame rate, ever. You wanna use 60, that's gonna look great. So for good PCs, I recommend 60. If you're dropping frames and your PC is struggling a little bit, you can drop it down to 48 to get a still real nice look. But for weaker end PCs, you want to drop that down to 30, which is half a 60, which is the standard refresh monitor rate of the average person who has a computer monitor. So that being said, if you have a good computer, choose 60. If you have a medium-ish computer and you're dropping frames, choose 48. If you have a low-end computer, choose 30. So we're just going to choose 30 and hit apply. And now we're gonna go over to the output tab on the left. And then we'll see four tabs at the top here, streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. Now we're gonna skip over to the recording tab since this is the recording tutorial. And then we're gonna change these options and gear them towards a graphics card encoding. So up at the top, we have standard. We're gonna keep that one there. We don't wanna choose custom output for FFmpeg unless you're super advanced and use that program, but we're gonna keep it on standard. Recording path has our location of where our videos are gonna land. We can generate the names without spaces if you check this box. So I'm gonna keep that unchecked. And then recording format, if we drop that down, we see a bunch of extensions, MP4, MOV, MKV. And the one we're gonna choose is actually MKV. For the longest time, I chose MP4 because that's the best thing to edit in and whatnot. It's the most compatible wrapper. But the benefit of using MKV for right now is if you have like a power outage and your computer totally shuts down, all the media you recorded all the way up to that second of shutdown is gonna be saved in that MKV file and it will not be corrupted. But if you have MP4, that entire MP4 file will get corrupted. And so I choose MKV, which is a safety option. And there's an additional part we're gonna talk about at the end here because I'm choosing MKV. So stay tuned right after I get done with these settings, I'm gonna tell you why. Down here for audio tracks, you can keep that on the first one unless you have multiple audio sources coming in. You can choose two, three, four, or five and adjust what audio sources land on those tracks in the audio mixer. For the encoder, we drop this down, we'll have a couple options. Use stream encoder means it's gonna be using the same encoder you use for your stream, if it's already set up. And if you have an NVIDIA card, like an RTX, you're gonna see an NVIDIA encoder. And if you have an AMD card, you're gonna see an AMD encoder. And then down below, we'll have X264, which is your processor. 
Now, if you have a really good graphics card, you can use your graphics card's encoder because graphics cards have an encoding chip that's separate from the actual gaming chip in them. So it won't affect any kind of gameplay you're playing if you're recording your gameplay using your NVIDIA or AMD encoder. So I'm gonna choose this one. Rescale output down here, we're gonna keep that unchecked because if we are gonna rescale, we're gonna make sure to do that in the video tab. Custom muxer settings, you can add some custom code in here to change it or convert your file, but I'm gonna leave that blank because we're gonna be changing all that muxer stuff in the advanced at the end here. Rate control, we drop this down, we have a few options, CBR, CQB, VBR, and lossless. After messing around with every single one of these, the absolute best one I've found is to use CQP. CQP is different than the rest because the other ones, you're choosing a target bit rate you wanna hit. But with CQP, you're actually giving it a number on a quality scale from zero to 52 which is kind of weird, but the lower number you go, the better quality your video is gonna be, and also the bigger the file size. If you go to the right of that scale, so a higher number, like 25, 30, your video file size is gonna shrink dramatically, but also your quality is gonna suffer a bit. So a good range in the CQB scale is anywhere from 15 to 25. I personally choose 15 because anything below 15, I can't even notice the quality difference, but I will notice the file size getting bigger. So 15 is absolutely perfect for me. And plus my computer is high end and it can handle it. If you have a more medium or low end computer, you can choose 20 and you're still gonna have an insanely good looking file and the file size is gonna be really low. So I'd choose this number anywhere from 15 to 25 and I'm gonna choose 15 for this tutorial's sake. Keyframe interval, by default it's on zero, which means it's automatic. It's gonna fluctuate between one and two. Usually you wanna put it on one if you have a lot of action in your recording. So if you're recording a first person shooter or things like that where the scenes and pixels are always changing every single second, you wanna choose one for maximum accuracy and the best looking recording. If you're recording yourself on like a game of chess or a wedding you know, ceremony where your camera's stationary and there's not much pixels changing around you, then you can choose two and that's gonna provide a better recording as well. So we're gonna keep it on one for this tutorial's sake. For preset, if we click this, we drop down, we have some pretty obvious choices here. They're self-explanatory. We have max quality, quality, performance, and max performance. Basically, this goes from good graphics card all the way down to weak graphics card. And then we have the low latency options, which are for like legendary graphics cards. So I have an RTX 3080, so this is the second best graphics card in the world right now, and it can do any one of these. So if I wanted low latency quality, I'd choose that one for my 3080. But for the average person who has probably like a RTX 2000 series or even still a GTX, you wanna choose any of these top four options based upon the age of your graphics card. GTXs, I'd probably stick with performance, max performance. RTXs, I'd probably stick with quality or max quality. So we're just gonna put quality for right now. Profile, if we drop this down, we have a few options. You'll probably never use baseline, but even for high and main, you don't really tell a difference. But the rule of thumb I like to use is if you're gonna be watching this recording on a computer monitor, you wanna choose high. If you're gonna be watching it on a cell phone, then you wanna choose main. So I'm gonna choose high for this tutorial. And then we have look ahead and psychovisual tuning. Look ahead checkbox, if we hover our mouse over the question mark, it tells us exactly what it is. Basically, if you check this, it will increase the visual quality of your recording and by fluctuating the B frames. So this is good to have checked. And then we have psychovisual tuning. If we hover our mouse over this, it's gonna enable encoder settings that optimize the bit rate to perceive better visual quality. I always keep this one checked as well for my recordings because it looks better when it is checked. GPU number right down here. If you have one graphics card in your computer, zero is default, and it's gonna be using that GPU. If you have multiple GPUs, maybe like three or four, you can increase this number by one value, so one, two, three, to select those separate GPUs. Now, it's never gonna use all of your GPUs encoders if you have multiple at the same time. It's only gonna use one encoder at a time, and you gotta specify which one it's doing. So by default, you keep this at zero, it's gonna be using your first graphics card's encoder. Max B frames, we can keep this at two because our look ahead is gonna be fluctuating this anyway, but if you don't have look ahead checked, one is good for fast paced motion, two is good for slow paced motion. That's just essentially, you know, a simplified version of what that is. So I'm just gonna keep this at two and keep look ahead checked. Go ahead and hit apply. And now, because remember, recording in MKV, I wanted to show you that advanced thing. We're gonna go over to advanced and over here under the recording area, we're gonna see automatically remix to MP4. So if you choose MKV or any of the formats that are not MP4, then you can check this box. And what it does is when you stop recording, it's gonna immediately convert your video file to an MP4 with a lossless conversion that's created by OBS.
And the reason you want to do this is because MKV files are highly incompatible with editing software or even viewing it on media players. So if you remux it to MP4, then you'll be able to watch it fluidly without any issues. And you'll also be able to edit it fluidly without any issues whatsoever. I do this every single time I'm recording because I want the best editing experience. Even for this tutorial you're watching right now, it has been remuxed to MP4 with that option. So make sure you definitely have this checked. It will create two files. It'll keep your MKV file and also then create a new MP4 file for you just so you're not deleting the original one if you want the MKV for whatever reason. But once you're done, hit apply and then OK and then record and see how it looks. You can always go back into the settings and adjust the values if you're dropping frames or if your encoders getting lagged up and just drop those or raise those accordingly. And there you have it. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.